In this video, I will show you how to store data in Flutter Secure Storage. Flutter Secure Storage enables you to store data securely in the form of key value pair. This Flutter Secure Storage is more likely similar to share preferences, but the difference is that Flutter Secure Storage has additional layer of security. So where is the data stored? For iOS, data is stored in Keychain. While Android, data is stored in key store. Flutter's secure storage mainly used to store sensitive data like JWT token or biometric data. Before we dive into the code, let me demonstrate how Flutter secure storage works. So in my emulator, I will provide a key and a value. Then when I click on the store button, it will store this key value pair into the storage. Next, let's retrieve the key value pair. So we have to provide the key to retrieve the value. Now, when I click on the retrieve button, you can see that it printed out the value that we stored just now in the terminal. Next, we can also delete the key value pair. Now I have deleted the key value pair and when I click on retrieve button again, you can see that it printed out no data found in the terminal. This is how Flutter Secure Storage works. Now let's dive into the code. In this tutorial, we will be using this Flutter Secure Storage package that you can find in pub.dev. Make sure you add the latest package dependency into your Flutter project. Now in my main code, I have created a simple Flutter UI with store button, retrieve button, and a delete button. Firstly, I will create a new file called securestorage.dat. Next, I will create a secure storage class. This class will initialize a Flutter secure storage instance for the use in the functions below. Now the first function is to write data into the storage. This write secure data function takes two string parameters which are key and value. Then to store the key value pair into the storage, we have to use storage.write function and provide the key and value. Now we have completed write function. Next is read function. This read secure data function takes a string parameter which is the key. Then in the function, we can read the key value pair using storage.read function and provide the key. This return value could be null as no key was found, so I will provide a default value. If the key is not found, it will return no data found string. For tutorial purposes, I will just add a print function to the data retrieve. Lastly is the delete function. This delete secure data function takes a string parameter, which is the key. In order to delete the key value pair, we can use storage.delete function from the package and provide the key. Now we have completed all three functions for Flutter Secure Storage. So coming back to our main file, I have created four text editing controllers to retrieve the input text. Now we just have to call the secure storage class function in each elevated button. Firstly, in the store elevated button, we can call secure storage dot write secure data function directly because the instance object will be created automatically in the class. So for the function parameters, I provide the user input according to the text editing controller assigned.
Next, for retrieve button, the text editing controller provided is retrieve key controller. So make sure you provided the correct text value into the function. Same goes to delete function. Now we have completed adding the function to each elevated buttons. Let's try it out in the emulator. So firstly, I will provide Jack as the key and Whiskey as the value. And I click on Store. Next, I will input Jack in the text field below and click on Retrieve. So as you can see in the terminal, Whiskey is retrieved and printed in the terminal. Next, I will add Jack to the text field below and click on Delete button. Now when I click again on the Retrieve button, you can see that no data found is printed out in the terminal. This means that I have just deleted the Jack Whiskey key value pair. Conclusion, this is how you store, read, and delete data from Flutter Secure Storage. If you have any question, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next tutorial.